Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara and today's video is going to be another update. I feel like I have a lot of updates these days. Chopping block updates, low buy updates, and next up we're going to have a graveyard project pan update. This particular update, I do videos every three to six months-ish, I would say. Basically, I do one every quarter. That's how I've done it so far this year, at least. And I'm just giving a general update to, I guess, more my relationship with makeup. It used to be like how I'm feeling about my no buy slash low buy, but now it's just more of a general, like, have I brought anything new into my collection? Am I happy about that? Do I wanna bring things in? How is decluttering going? Just talking through this no buy because I am technically on a no buy. I mean, we'll get into it, but basically I have stuck to the no buy technically, but I've still brought new things into my collection. So first let's talk about if I have brought anything new into my collection. And well, new, no, not exactly, but I have definitely brought things into my collection. Quite a few makeup items. I <laughs> I was actually super happy with my eyeshadow collection because I decluttered three palettes this year. Is that possible? I should double check that. I decluttered at least two palettes this year and I wanted to do that. Like I'd been thinking about it for a while for these particular palettes, but I also felt like there were some gaps in my collection. There were some colors that I wanted or shades or formulas whatever. And I brought four palettes into my collection. So two or three out and four in. Not a great ratio, but I still have like fewer than 10 palettes. So it's not that many, but it's just funny how quickly I went from seven. I got it down to seven and now I'm at, I guess, 11. All of these things kind of just like fell into my lap. Two were from a buns trade and then two friends decluttered to me. Speaking of buns trades, I got these really cute little pineapple lights. I don't know if you'll be able to see them because it's not that dark in here, but put them along the bed. Thought they were super cute. Anyways, these are the Warrior and Warrior 2 palettes from Jubia's Place. Also, I've talked about all of these before at some point, but I just want to give a brief overview. So this one I've gotten more use out of, but there's like, I don't use the whole palette. I really love the the middle row and then a little bit that brown in the top there. Huge pans, like compared to regular eyeshadows. I wonder if some people use these for blushes. Actually, I'm tempted to use that red shade as a blush just to see what it's like, but it is very pigmented. I think it would be pretty dark on my cheeks. Anyways, maybe one day. And then this is the Warrior 2 by Julia's Place. I actually have not gotten that much use out of this one simply because I was so focused on that other one for a while. But the shimmers in here are amazing. Those two and that one there. I definitely need to get some more use out of them. But I feel like I've been wearing metallic shades a lot lately, partially because of one of the eyeshadows in my Graveyard Project Pan and partially because these next two palettes that I got. So this was decluttered to me by my friend Laura. She actually posted it on buns and I saw it and I was like, can I, can I take that actually? So it's from ColourPop and I, I wouldn't have bought this palette. I mean, all of these, well, maybe this one I would have bought, but most of them I wouldn't have purchased just because there's a lot of shades that I know I'm not going to use and my nails do not look good. So please ignore that but I don't like cool tone shades. I don't like blues. I generally don't like anything kind of grungy or brown. So from this, the ones that I use are those two, that one there, and then these two there. Those are my favorite shades. And so I've used this for like full eyeshadow looks, like basically just do a whole eye of shimmer. I don't love that as much as I love just putting a matte in the crease and then blending out a shimmer. This is a handy eyeshadow palette to have just because it has so many shimmers, but unless you think you're gonna use all of them, I wouldn't recommend it. And then this is my favorite of the lot, I think, or at least the one that I've gotten the most use out of. This is the Nude Light by Huda Beauty. This was decluttered to me by Shauna. Thank you so much, Shauna. These colors are absolutely gorgeous. Actually, this one, I pretty much use all of the shades here. Not that mauve one there, but all of the other ones I can make work on my lids. So that's helpful. 
again I'm offended she decluttered it but I'm really happy to have it in my collection I have made a lot of beautiful looks for me this was like my spring palette I would say like May and a bit of June I got a lot of use out of this so I'm really happy to have all of those palettes in my collection and I'm glad that I got those previous palettes out so that I could sort of make room for some new ones. But in that last video I actually predicted that my eyeshadow collection would grow somewhat so this wasn't entirely unexpected. I thought I would get singles from the brand Cleona which is an indie Canadian like local makeup brand. I was very interested in them I think in like December January but then they released this palette that I wasn't super into and they were just constantly sold out of everything and also I don't know if I was aware of this before but like you basically had to pay the same for shipping. I don't know if it was across Canada or across the world but shipping was like more expensive than the products were going to be which doesn't make any sense because I live in Toronto and it's in Toronto like I could have just gone to pick stuff up do you know what I mean? I mean, I don't like paying shipping to begin with, but like if I'm in the same city, I should not have to pay for shipping. So that kind of made me less interested and also because they were just constantly sold out and I didn't love the eyeshadow palette. So I will keep my eyes on them as a brand, but yeah, because I have all of these new palettes, I'm like, do I really need to get even more, you know? I will link that previous video, by the way, because I'm sort of referencing a lot of stuff I talked about in that. But the MAC concealer was the only concealer in my collection for like, six months and I knew when I ran out of it I would have to get some more. What ended up happening was I got some samples from Buns foundation slash concealer because I wanted to test the product before I tried something new. In Sephora you actually used to be able to get samples which makes a ton of sense like I want to make sure that I like something before using it because I am you know pretty intentional and conscious about the makeup that I purchased. So anyways, when I was last in Sephora, I was like, oh, can I get a sample of, I don't know if I was looking for like the Bite foundation or the Ilia one, but they were like, no, we don't do samples because of COVID, which just definitely leads to more people returning their products, ergo more makeup being thrown out needlessly. So that sucks, not a fan of that. But in any case, I was able to kind of try out some samples from a couple brands and I didn't love any of them so not super helpful but then my friend Shauna actually decluttered two concealers to me which is super super helpful and I do actually like both of them. I don't think I love either of them but I like them enough to make use out of them so I will use those until I don't know, Sephora does samples again, or I come across something that I really know that I am going to love. So the two concealers that I now have in my collection are the e.l.f. 16 Hour Camel Concealer and the ColourPop Pretty Fresh, Pretty Fresh, Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. I like the ColourPop one better because it's not quite as thick. Like this is still fairly heavy coverage, but this e.l.f. one is like, it is not budging. It says 16 hours and I would believe it. I'm not gonna test it out, but I would believe it. It is also super, super light. You can see it on the back of my hand there, but that is handy because I do have some like darker foundations samples. So I just mix it with that and then it works well, but it's still like obviously very thick coverage. So I just, I feel like I've been using a lot of very heavy coverage products and I don't love that, especially because it's the summer, but all of the samples that I got from that buns trade are heavy coverage for whatever reason. This, on the other hand, she decluttered to me. This is the Maybelline Dream BB Pure Skin Mattifying Beauty Balm. And I really enjoy this because it is so much lighter. So it just, it just feels better on my skin. It's more natural for the summertime. Doesn't feel as thick even right now. Like, you know, I could, I feel like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. This is the final sample I have remaining. This is from Kali Ray. It is the Free Dreaming Skin Wellness Diffusing Tint Clean Foundation. I actually did like this when I used the sample in the other shade, but I don't think that they're cruelty free. I don't even know if they're sold at Sephora. I liked it because it was a bit lighter in terms of coverage, but yeah, not sure that I would purchase this. It is also a bit dark for me, if you can tell that, just because, you know, I'm using the next shade up. I am going to be trying to rehome the remaining samples that I received because it was like a variety of shades. Obviously, I can't fit all of the shades so hopefully I can make use of those because I really do not want to be trying to mix like much darker than me shades with this elf concealer and just that being my foundation for like the next six months that would not be fun okay and then I'll quickly show you the other products that Shauna decluttered to me a couple of Fenty Beauty products one is a cream bronzer for whatever reason I actually like 
cream bronzer better than cream blush. I'm really enjoying this. Maybe it's just this particular one, but yeah, I like that a lot. This is the Diamond Bomb all over Diamond Feel. So basically you just like swipe this on your lids. It does have a bit of color, but it's mostly just like shimmery. Love that for a fairly natural makeup day where you just want like a little bit of sparkle on the lids. This is the MAC Blush in Warm Soul. It's nice, I don't have anything else like this that's kind of that like nude shade, although I haven't gotten a ton of use out of that. This Vesca Moonlit Dream Cream Shadow. Now this is a single eyeshadow and yet I still use it, which is impressive because in the past, whenever I've had cream eyeshadows, I just don't reach for them. Like cream eyeshadow, it's sort of similar to the Diamond Balm one actually, but it's a bit pinker. Or like single shadows, anything that's like in a tube, I'm just like, ugh, that's so annoying. But I like this so much that I don't even care that it's like its own container. I still reach for it. And then the last thing is this Tower 28 lip gloss in Spicy. I used this in one video just to like try it out. And since then I haven't reached for it, but that's because of me. I do not like lip gloss. I know everyone is obsessed with this formula, but to me, it's just another lip gloss. However, I'm happy to have it in my collection. If for whatever chance, maybe one day that changes and I actually fall in love with lip gloss. I don't think it will. Even today you can tell I'm wearing like a liquid lipstick from back in the day. And I like this effect and feel so much better than any lip gloss I've ever tried. And the last new thing I want to show you is just this birthday set from Sephora. In the past, I've actually only got the like makeup birthday gift. Usually they have a skincare, hair care, and makeup <laughs> option. I think this year the only cruelty free one was hair, which was fine with me because I don't need new makeup. I actually, I think I had the products in the other categories anyways, but I've been hearing about Amika and look how cute this stuff is. Oh my God, this dry shampoo so handy haven't used any of these yet because i'm just like that as a person and then we have two masks this is the flash instant shine mask and the other one is the soul food nourishing mask not really sure what the difference is there but i haven't gotten through any hair care stuff recently i part of it is because my hair is shorter now so like i don't use as much conditioner but i haven't had a hair care empty in a while so that's part of the reason why i haven't opened any of these things i really look forward to doing so but yeah look how look how cute this packaging is i am really excited to use those let me know if you have tried amika i have not because i don't try hair care stuff i'm pretty simple with my hair business okay I, I lied i have one more new thing to show you just some lush products so i got a i actually don't know which one is which i think this is the soap it's just like a lemon one. Ooh, super lemony really nice and sort of refreshing smelling this one is a shampoo i hadn't tried this one before but it's really nice very sort of calming and then this is the conditioner i'm guessing look how blue that is that's gorgeous so i really enjoy it much i actually would prefer to buy from like a small independent soap maker shampoo maker kind of thing and i do know somebody here but this was just a, a birthday present from my mom so those are all of the new products that i brought into my life recently and it's actually kind of a lot i think in the past i only had to report on like a couple of new items but this time i brought so much new stuff in hopefully that is outweighed by the number of things that i have decluttered lately it might not be i have been more efficient with decluttering clothing than decluttering makeup lately but I'm working on it. I really am. And usually in these videos, I show if there's any like new clothing that I have. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do that just because it's actually a lot of work to do like a try on haul at the end of a video. And I think a lot of people stop watching for those, even though I freaking love try on hauls and I love all of the new stuff I got. So haven't decided about that yet. Overall, I am a lot happier with my collection now, I think, because honestly, well, part of it is just how long I had had a lot of my products. Like I wasn't happy with them anymore. I just wasn't able to declutter them. And a lot of my older stuff, I have been able to work out of my collection or finish off, which has always been the goal. I have brought in some new things, which are more exciting to me, which have been curated and generally which are higher end. I am on the whole trying to have a like more high-end than drugstore collection just because i don't know i feel like i take those products more seriously or i'm more dedicated about 
using them or I value them more highly, which is probably a problem in and of itself. But for now, that's just the direction that I'm choosing to go with my collection. I do feel like I need to declutter some more things. I almost feel like this would be a good time to do a makeup inventory because then I would be able to tell how many things have come into my collection this year versus how many things have gone out. I don't know the total number of declutters. I will of course be doing a makeup inventory in December at the end of the year so you'll be able to see how much my collection has changed between 2021 and 2022. At the moment I don't have the exact numbers because I don't track super well. I, I should, I just don't. But yeah, I wanna know if I like should be decluttering more products for my collection right now. But on the whole, I'm happy with where, where I'm at on my makeup no buy slash low buy. I do not plan on bringing honestly anything. I don't plan on bring, bringing any new products into my collection for the rest of the year. But if something happens, if there's a product on buns that I really want, or if Shauna and I do another makeup swap or something, I... I mean, I'm probably not gonna say no, but at the moment I'm not planning to buy any new makeup. I'm happy with where my collection is at right now. In other like makeup related news, just, you know, sort of generally YouTube, I feel like I'm a lot less stressed now than I was when I filmed that last video. At the time, I mean, honestly, from like February till June, I was just like busy and stressed all the time. It's really only been the past couple weeks that I've been I've had a bit more space to breathe. I've been able to make some reels finally. Making these videos hasn't been so last minute with filming and editing, which has resulted in like more freedom with my makeup, I think. Even today, like I tried to do a cut crease look, which I hadn't done in ages. I don't think it turned out great, but I recently rolled my Naked Heat palette back into my daily makeup bag, shot my stash kind of thing, which I hadn't done in ages because I was trying to get used out of my new palettes and I just love it. So I'm looking forward to having that for a while, but I am trying some out of the box makeup looks a little bit more and I, I look forward to continuing to do that. Also, another interesting thing is that I feel like I'm actually wearing makeup a little bit less than I used to these days. There are quite a few days where I don't see anyone. I'm just like doing schoolwork at home all day. And then in the evening, I'll be working on a video or something like that. And I don't always choose to wear makeup on those days. Whereas I always used to, I think because it was like a de-stressor for me, it would make me feel better to get ready. Even if my time was a lot more limited, I would take those 20 minutes to do my makeup in the morning because it would just help me de-stress and I would feel better throughout the day, even if I didn't have any meetings or I wasn't seeing anyone or anything like that. Now I choose to let my skin breathe a little bit more than I used to. And I'm taking two days a week to not wear makeup, which is a big deal for me. <laughs> and I don't know if it's like a mindset shift because it's not during the school year. I don't have classes. Like I always had the opportunity to not wear makeup before. There would be some days where I didn't have meetings, but now I just, yeah, things feel a little bit, a little bit more relaxed and that's nice, you know, to feel like I have a bit more freedom while at the same time, like getting to try my new products and still product panning my old products. I feel like I am in a really good place with makeup right now. And I'm also having the opportunity to do fun looks pretty often because I have events where I'm seeing friends or parties or, you know, things like that, where I'm like, you know, I look forward to doing my makeup all day for that. I love that. Makeup is just like fun right now and not super stressful. So I actually think that that is all that I wanted to cover in this video. I don't think I'm going to do a clothing haul in this one, but I am doing a reel with the cl new clothing that I got. It's not just with makeup where I brought a bunch of new things in, it's also clothing. The past couple months, I've been like a fiend, just buying so much clothing. I think because I didn't buy a ton of stuff during COVID and now I'm just like making up for it. I'm finding stuff on Facebook Marketplace, Plato's Closet, Common Sort. I went thrifting with Shauna a while ago. And yeah, even this shirt I'm wearing right now, I think I'm gonna declutter it. I got this from Primark in Boston in 2017, I think. And now have you noticed off the shoulder shirts, they're out. I would love to hear how you are doing with your personal no buy slash low buy slash conscious consumerism, whatever kind of journey you're on. I'd love to hear how it's going, how long you have been on it. And if you need videos to like hold you accountable, or if you want more videos from me to motivate you on that journey. Am I even on like a no buy anymore? At this point, this is just like, my lifestyle you know it's like people who like 
eat healthy or whatever. At some point, it's it's not like, oh, I'm eating healthy this month now. It's just, this is just how I eat. These are the foods I eat. And that's kind of like a more holistic, I think, way to approach makeup. So I'm glad that I'm in this space. I'm gonna call it no lie slash low buy just like for branding purposes, but I honestly don't even know what journey I am on anymore. I'm just in my conscious consumerism journey, I think. But that has more to do with resources and the environment than like a personal relationship to makeup. But anyways, thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. I will be doing an update in three months again. Sorry, this one came a bit late. It should have technically come out like the beginning of July, but here we are. I don't think I will have gotten any new products between now and the next update, but I'm sure I will find stuff to ramble about next time. Anyways, and now let's talk about a book that I've been reading lately. So I actually took this one back to the library. I normally would have held on to the book just to like show it in my video, but this is a super popular book. So I wanted to make sure that the next person would have access to it as soon as possible. This is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I will pop up a little picture right here. I kind of wish that I'd filmed this bit like I don't know, a week ago because that's when I finished it and I had a lot of strong feelings at the time and now they're a little harder to remember. But overall, I liked it better than I thought I would. Usually when things are super, super hyped up, it's kind of underwhelming when you eventually try the product or see the movie, <laughs> read the book or whatever. But because I think my expectations were pretty low for this, I actually enjoyed it. I did find it hard to put down in the last half particularly. I was just like constantly reading it. So even while reading it and not being able to put it down, I was like, this is not going to be a favorite. I don't love this. I don't love any of the characters. Well, okay, I love one of the characters, but I still like, it, it was just so propulsive. So thumbs up to that if you want a book that you're going to be just devouring. It definitely fits that bill. It was a lot darker than I was expecting. I didn't realize that it was about some like difficult themes, which would be triggering to a lot of people, I think. So probably do your research. If you know that there are certain topics that are sensitive to you, I would definitely look up what it's about beforehand. I went in knowing nothing, knowing that it was a romance. That was basically it. I will give some spoilers because I know a lot of you have read it, but I will put spoiler here when I'm giving the spoiler. Basically, it's about this girl named Lily who has a complicated relationship with both her parents. She lives in Boston and she's pretty alone. She doesn't seem to have any friends, any romantic partners. She, she just seems fairly lonely, but she has this amazing backstory. And the whole book, I was way more invested in the backstory than her actual like life and what was going on with her life. She had this kind of a romance, really sweet story. Well, that's how I read it. It's probably kind of, you know, savior-esque, but I thought that it was written very well. So Lily has this relationship with this boy, Atlas, and she's just kind of constantly thinking about high school when she was with him. And that was my favorite part of the book for sure. And I kept like <laughs> rooting for Atlas. I was like, I don't care about anyone else in this, but there is another love interest that comes in. And I was like momentarily interested in him. And then I was like, mm, no, I still like Atlas better. Okay, spoiler time. I thought that the assault was, can I talk about this on YouTube? I feel like I keep talking about topics that like you, you're not supposed to talk about on YouTube. <laughs> I felt like the assault was written in a very honest way. And there's an author's note at the back, which I think is really helpful to read after you have finished the book because she talks about what inspired the book. It wasn't directly inspired by her life, but there was real elements in her life that inspired the book. And I think that that really shines through because I felt conflicted throughout the book, which I wasn't expecting. It felt very honest. My issue with it was honestly the pregnancy. So Lily is being abused by her partner. It doesn't happen super frequently, but it seems to be with increasing frequency and they have these strategies to deal with it when he gets angry because he does have issues, but it still keeps happening. And so she has to decide what to do. She realizes she's pregnant. And I honestly feel like the pregnancy thing it just it's such a trope I feel like I see this all the time in books and in movies where someone gets pregnant and there's barely a, like the the they always end up having the child regardless of how impractical impossible it will be and in this book like it I I don't want to make her decisions for her but 
in the context in which she is pregnant, it really doesn't seem like it makes sense for her to have that baby. Sorry, I just had a buns trade, so I was able to gather my thoughts a little bit. Also, look how cute this is. This is the, I got a little jewelry box. This one I actually just paid cash for. Usually I trade for items, but yeah. Super handy because you guys have been telling me how I need to get something that will like actually organize my jewelry and my partner has been getting real annoyed because I just throw my stuff on there and his mom keeps getting me like necklaces and stuff and I have nowhere to put it. So anyways, really excited about this. I wish it was all white. I don't really love the color, but whatever. It's probably going to be tucked in the drawer anyways. Use buns. Trade for items, circular economy, all that. Another point of contention was I kind of saw every single thing coming. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, she meets this guy. He's going to be the guy. And then I was like, oh, Atlas is going to come back into the picture. Oh, we're going to find this out about her parents. Oh, we're going to find this out about her partner. So it was sort of easy to see where things are going, but that doesn't mean that it was like less impactful. I still think it was, it was well done and I was captivated, as I said. But the pregnancy thing I really had an issue with because I see a lot of movies, I read a lot of books. This is, it just kind of becomes a trope where a woman is in some kind of difficult circumstances and she has no plans to have a baby, but all of a sudden she's pregnant. It, this is just like for a dramatic effect to add drama, to add more issues to the plot line. Is she going to have a baby or not? How is she going to deal with it? I just find it tiresome because it just feels like a trope at this point and this wouldn't come up if it was a book about a man obviously if it was a male main character but it just feels like it's it's thrown in it just feels very cheap to me and it's almost for like shock value i don't think i fully fleshed out like i'm not fully able to explain why this bugs me so much it's probably just because i've seen it so much and it feels so unrealistic to me whereas the rest of the book it felt very honest and this just felt like it was thrown in there to make her make a decision do you know what i mean and in all of these storylines they always keep the baby which is part of the frustrating thing because that doesn't feel realistic i mean she did want kids someday in the book but she she doesn't want kids at this moment i'm not just talking about this particular instance i've just seen it so many times and it doesn't feel real it feels cheap so Hopefully, I was probably ranting for a long time there, but let me know if you understand what you mean and if you can think of more examples of books like this because yeah, I can't be the only one who feels this way. So <laughs> that is it for today's video. Sorry, it was kind of all over the place. I've literally been filming for 49, more than 49 minutes now, but it's only been about 22 minutes probably because so much of it didn't film. But that is it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Y'all, this is the third time that I'm trying to film this segment, so I will try to say it word for word like I did the last two times, but I'm already annoyed. <laughs> uh, my partner's always telling me I'm so bad at technology, and I'm like, honestly, it's not my fault. Technology is bad at me, okay? Even last week, we were trying to get movie tickets. I swear to God, I have, I do not have trouble with anything as much as I have trouble with the Cineplex website. So after like 25 minutes of me trying to, <laughs> to do it, I'm, I, I was timing myself to see how long it took because I was like, this is getting ridiculous. After 25 minutes, I got him to try to get the tickets and it, it didn't work for him either. And then he started getting frustrated. I'm like, yes, this is what happens to me every time with technology. It's not my fault. The technology just likes me. The rest of the day, it still didn't work. We had to try again the next day. And then we had to try for different tickets than originally planned because those tickets were not working for us. And then like those seats. And then my other friend who was also coming with us managed to get those tickets. And we had tried on three devices using three different methods of payment. Okay, I'm sorry for the rant. You are not here for this, but kind of. Okay.